All right, Molly, you all set. Okay, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I would like to call this morning's August meeting of the Outreach and Engagement Committee to order. The time is 9.02. Um, Stephanie, would you please do the roll call? Of course, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Ava Bermuda Zimmerman. Present. Uh, Isha Canada. I don't think she's joined us yet. Adrian Cochran. Present. Sheila Hummel. Present. Molly Weston Williamson. Present. And Justin Sartman. Present. All right, we have a quorum. Great, thank you so much. Uh, I want to take a moment to acknowledge that we may have one or two members of the public joining us this morning. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, can we move ahead to the review and approval of the July meeting minutes? Um, any make a motion to. On... Thank you. Oh, I, I was just going to make a motion to approve the July minutes. Thank okay. you, Sheila. Second. Justin, uh, thank you. I hear, uh, hear a second from Justin, uh, and I believe Isha has joined us. One minute, bud. Um, uh, all those in favor of approving the July minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, I believe the ayes have it. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jessica for our outreach and engagement updates. Thanks, Molly. Good morning, everyone. Uh, all right. <clears throat> so um, I know I just gave you an update last month that went through um the end of this month, but we've added some additional uh, events and webinars. So I thought I'd give another overview. Um, so yesterday, Nancy and Nicole were at the Crec Back to School Block Party. And I had a message from Nancy this morning that it was, um, in her words, insane in a good way. Uh, just really, really well attended. They had the chance to, um, you know, interact with a lot of different folks. So that was a great one for us. Um, through Nicole's work, we've connected with the Connecticut Family Support Network, which is a um, nonprofit that supports uh, families with loved ones with um, disabilities. And so we've arranged to do two webinars for them. The first will be next week on the 20th. Um, and then we'll also be doing one uh, later on, which you'll see further down in September. And so we'll be doing our first one in English. And then the second one on 924 will be in Spanish. Um, also next week, uh, Nicole will be at the SBA Small Business Fair in Southbury. We've done a couple of these. They're really great way for us to connect with um, not only small business owners, also a sole proprietor, self-employed, and folks who are thinking about starting their business. So we're able to really get in sort of on the ground floor with them and make them aware of what our program is all about and what obligations they might have, uh, what opportunities they might have as a sole proprietor, and then what obligations they might have should they take on employees. We'll also be doing a webinar with Project Access New Haven, which is a nonprofit that um, works with the underserved community in the New Haven area. We have the Angel of Edgewood back to school event, um, oh. which this is our first one, but we've been told they have uh, upwards of 3000 individuals that attend. Oh. So that'll be in Hartford. Um, and then I mentioned this uh, Family Support Network Spanish presentation. We have another small business fair with SBA in Bristol in September. Um, Nancy will be at the Connecticut Community for Addiction Recovery Walk at the end of September. And the Office of the Treasurer invited us to a resource fair they're putting on in New Haven at the end of September. Um, to They're promoting baby bonds, and then they have other groups coming in to provide resources as well. So as you can see, a lot going on and we're constantly adding new things, which um, we love being out and about as much as possible. Wanted to make you aware of something that we are um, submitting some information to participate in a program. So this actually came about when we were down at the um, convening of Paid Leave States Conference in June, um, the DOL Women's Bureau held a sort of a mini conference, um, equity and implementation of paid leave. And one of the presenters was a group of researchers from Brandeis University who had looked at different websites of paid leave states and done sort of an analysis of, um, you know, readability and accessibility and things of that nature. 
which was really interesting. So Erin, John, and I connected with the lead researcher afterwards to just find out more about her methodology and to get, you know, sort of our full results. And from that conversation, we discovered she's actually an instructor at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health as well. And she does a project with her students there where um, organizations can submit information and have it assessed for, um, you know, a health literacy project. So we are submitting information. We don't know for sure that we'll be chosen by the students, but we're really hoping that we will. And so they would be looking at things like our infographics, our website, our, uh, um, you know, application process with AFLAC. Um, so just wanted to share this with you to kind of set the stage so we'll be able to tell you more if we are in fact part of um, this research, research study. But, you know, also we're always looking for different ways to assess our materials and find out what we can do better to make our program more accessible. So we're really, um, you know, happy that we're able to connect with Brandeis and that it then led to this other opportunity. So we'll keep you posted on what happens with that. Um, it's been a good couple of weeks for us in terms of uh, news organizations picking up our press releases. So as I mentioned last month, because we had one of these last month as well, part of our PR strategy is to do um, two press releases per month where we tie it in with whatever our podcast topic is for the month or if there's something um, sort of unique that's happening that we want to make sure we promote. So we released one um, just last week. Um, talking about community health center was national health center week. We had a uh, Deb Polin, the chief strategy officer who Nancy had as a guest on the podcast from community health center association of Connecticut. And so she worked on a press release with us and Fox 61 picked that up and published it um, last week. So just wanted to share that with you. We're always glad when we're out there in the news and I, I have it linked so you can read the article if you would like. Um, update on the five minutes of impact. This is the new virtual segment that Nancy and Nicole have created. So we just released the second episode, which is with the Wheeler Center for Prevention, Recovery and Wellness. And um, the guest was the program coordinator for the Change the Script program, which focuses on um, prescription drug misuse, pre preventing overdoses and things of that nature. So our first segment was with a small business owner whose focus is helping the elderly when they're sort of downsizing their homes and, and moving into different living environments. Now we've got this one with the Wheeler Clinic. So um, I just wanted to share with you kind of the topics so you can sort of see the diversity of the things that Nancy and Nicole have been working on. And if you haven't had a chance to listen, um, please do, because they're, they're really well done and uh, we're, we're excited about this new initiative. And then lastly, I know you've heard um, Maddie talking a lot about Public Act 24-5, the changes, the outreach that she's been doing to, um, you know, different groups to make them aware. So I just wanted to give you a quick screenshot of some of the updates that we've made on the website. Um, so we've added a new section, uh, not only, you know, a note for municipalities that has a link to a one page Maddie created, which sort of explains what the changes were in that act. But also we have this accordion feature for individual groups where they can open it up and see specifics to things that would be important to them. So I just, um, you know, to show you opened one up to top things Snopey work for a tribal enterprise. Um, so we're, these are some new things on the site to just hope, hopefully kind of clarify for individuals who might fall into these different groups. And we're also working on some other um, additions. Uh, we also have added information for how people who are part of these groups um, can register through our My Account portal, um, just some specific notes for them. So this is on the coverage and eligibility page if you wanted to check it out and sort of read the information in more detail. And that is what I have for this month. So happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jessica. Does anyone have any questions for Jessica? Okay, then I think we can turn it over to Nancy for the podcast update. Well, good morning, everybody. How is everybody on this wonderful sunny Thursday? I hope you're all doing well. Um, as Jess just talked about, uh, Deb Poland, the Chief Strategy Officer at the Community Health Center Association of Connecticut. Um, we've done a bunch of outreach with her. In fact, we're also doing um, a two-day summit 
um, that they are conducting and we're going to actually table there. But um, Deb was wonderful and she was so um, willing to share the information about the podcast. She shared it on um, community health centers, um, personal social media, her personal social media. So she really um, embraced it. And we really had a wonderful conversation about community health centers and how important they are. And um, we actually also did an appearance at the, one of the community health centers during community health center week. Um, she talked about her role in planning for a sustainable community health center network. And it was really just a great conversation. And um, also, as Jess said, and I won't um, belabor it, but we were on Fox 61. Um, Carter got that released for us, which was wonderful. And uh, coming up, I will be releasing um, the podcast with State Treasurer Eric Russell talking about baby bonds and their intersection um, with Connecticut paid leave. And he talks about poverty and the importance of breaking that cycle. He was really a wonderful guest, talked about a lot about his office. And so it was really um, interesting. And if you didn't know, the most children are born in the month of August. And that's why we decided uh, to do this podcast in August. Um, coming up in September, um, Fall Prevention Week is September 23rd to the 27th. And I uh, did a podcast, I've already recorded it with Angela Vasquez. She's the Helping Aging Program Coordinator for the Bureau of Aging in Connecticut. And it was really interesting talking to her uh, about fall prevention and um, how 60 plus year olds um, can have a healthier lifestyle. And we talked, it was really an interesting conversation with her as well. And um, she also used the program. So we talked about um, her use of Connecticut paid leave as well. And also coming up in September, I just got an interview with uh, Marissa Porco. Um, she's the CEO of the Jordan Porco Foundation. It's Suicide Prevention month in September. Uh, we're going to have a discussion about the origins of the Jordan Porco Foundation and how that intersects with mental health and Connecticut paid leave. And um, I'm really excited to talk to her. I think it's going to be a really impactful and powerful uh, conversation. And I really believe those stories connect so well with people. So not only will she be great to talk about the whole foundation, but also um, the importance of talking about suicide prevention and, and mental health. And finally, the stats from our Buzzsprout platform, where we put the podcast, uh, we are at 5,204 downloads. And um, uh, there's a lot of information. Um, the top five podcasts are still um, Andre Barton Reeves and then Domestic Violence with... Um, CCED, I'm um, a uh, CCAR, sorry, and um, an addict story from near death. Um, that was CCAR and uh, Aaron's podcast with what is Connecticut paid leave, Connecticut FMLA and federal FMLA, and finally the governor. So those are the top five podcasts that we have, and our web browser gets the most um, downloads, and then Apple, Spotify, Castbox, and iHeartRadio. I was surprised by those. So. Um, those are just a few of the stats. Um, and if you have any questions, you can um, let me know. Thanks so much, Nancy. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Nancy? Okay, then I think we have Maddie with the legislative update. Okay, hey, great. Good morning, everyone. Uh, is it okay? Uh, okay, you can see my screen, right? Uh, okay, so I just have a really brief update on the implementation of Public Act uh, 245, which I've um, been talking about for the last few months, so I kind of sound like a broken record, but it is um, it is a lot of work to make sure that, you know, we're, we're doing the appropriate outreach and we have everything updated on our website and in our written materials as well. Um, so as I mentioned earlier this summer, our priority really continues to be um, outreach to entities that will no longer be considered um, a municipality as of October 1st. 
Um, we're continuing to work to identify additional entities that fall into this category of a newly covered employer um, and making outreach to them. An example of that um, just this week um, is um, our connecting with you know nonprofit organizations that have contracts with a town um, to extinguish fires. They were previously considered a municipality, but under the new definition, they won't be, um, and they'll be covered employers as of um, October 1st. Um, different associations and unions and um, and groups have been really extremely helpful to us in identifying these different entities um, and figuring out kind of where they fall, whether they're um, included in this new definition of municipality or not. Um, so that, that's been really helpful. Um, we're also hosting webinars on the new definition and what it means to be a covered employer under Connecticut Paid Leave and Connecticut FMLA. Uh, yesterday, we partnered with the Connecticut Library Consortium on a webinar for their members. Um, we had about 25 attendees. Um, we partnered with them because some of their members are association libraries, um, which means they're not part of a municipality, technically, so they will be covered employers as of October 1st. Um, something new that I learned this summer about the difference between an association library and municipal library, um, so we're, we're making that distinction with them. Um, later today, we have a webinar um, in partnership with CCM, um, and then we're also hosting kind of a final webinar on our own um, that will be recorded and posted on our website and YouTube channel on se September 16th at 11 a.m., um, so I, I'll send around the links to register in case anyone's interested. Um, at the end of August, um, we were also invited to do an in-person session at the um, Convention of the Connecticut Chapter of the National Association of Housing and Redevelopment Officials. Um, that will be focused on, again, the definition of municipality and how it specifically, specifically will impact housing authorities. Um, some additional priorities regarding the new law um, are that we're finalizing you know, information for posting by healthcare providers, and we're also identifying ways to distribute those, those materials um, to healthcare providers across the state. And we're also in the process of updating our written materials to reflect the changes um, to the Family Violence Leave Act that includes victims of sexual assault. Um, earlier this month, uh, just some miscellaneous updates now that earlier this month, um, we were invited to and attended a press conference um, hosted by Lieutenant Governor in the Department of Public Health um, in recognition of World Breastfeeding Week. Um, in August being National Breastfeeding Awareness Month. Um, it was at the Legislative Office Building. Nicole attended um, and made a lot of really great connections. Um, one of those connections was actually with a researcher from the Yukon Rudd Center. Um, so we're in discussions with them now about how to potentially partner um, on some research regarding the impact of paid leave on you know, economic security and infant and maternal health. Um, we're also working right now to update the Legislator and Community Toolkit um, it's just good to like revisit those every few months to make sure that um, all the information is up to date and the um, screenshots and everything are um, are still relevant. So um, that's all I have. Thanks so much, Maddie. Does anyone have any questions for Maddie? Okay. Uh, is there any old business anyone would like to raise? Is there any new business anyone would like to raise? Okay, then uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Eva. Is there a second? I'll second, second. it. Either uh, I one. Heard, I think I heard Justin first. Uh, any discussion of the motion to adjourn? Uh, all those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 And I believe the ayes have it. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, the meeting is adjourned and the time is 921. And we Thank will you, see you everyone. in September. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye.